What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this super quick guide, I'll be showing you how to set up and run your own Aralcraft Dragora server. So, you and your friends can try and beat this difficult mod pack. But before we get into it, this video was sponsored by Apex Hosting. If you'd like a super easy way to get a powerful Minecraft server set up, check out Apex Hosting using the link down below, as they provide super low latency, high performance DDoS protected servers with fantastic customer support and automatic backups. Simply click the link down below, check the latest coupon code in the top right, currently it's Apex 25 for 25% off your first invoice. Choose Get Started and configure your server for Java, Bedrock, or any other game for that matter. Choose your server size and just like that, you'll have a server set up in no time. A special shout out to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. So, RL Craft Dragora. In order to play this mod pack, you'll need to install the Curse Forge app. I'll assume that you already have the Curse Forge app installed. And of course, under the Minecraft section, you've already installed RL Craft Dragora. Dragora. If not, use the search at the very top, look for RL Craft, and you should find it somewhere near the top, right over here in this case. Simply choose to install it, and once you've got it done, you are able to play it in single player. That's cool and all, but let's get a server set up so you and your friends can join and play straight away, completely for free. All that you need to do is, inside of CurseForge, head across to Minecraft, followed by your already installed RL Craft Dragora. Click the image to open it up, and on this page here, click this button to download download the server pack. You can also click the three dots here and then choose download server pack here. This will open up your browser and immediately start downloading the actual server pack. Alternatively, from the Curse Forge website, find RL Craft Dragora, scroll down, and on the right hand side, you'll find main file, recent files, and you should find server packs somewhere here. Click the latest release here to start downloading it. Either way, once this zip file is downloaded, you'll have most of the server files here. We'll need to extract this to a folder where we'll be running our server from. For this, I'll be making a new folder on my desktop, simply called RL Craft D. Good enough. We'll open it up and extract all of the files from the zip into this folder here. Now you can close and delete the zip and inside of here you should find a bunch of different text files including server readme down here. Open this with any text editor and inside of it you'll find some detailed instructions for which I'll be running through all of these visually just to help you out. Essentially this pack comes with a pre-configured server.properties file. All of these settings at the very top need to be set exactly as written here otherwise things things aren't going to work properly. We'll verify these in just a moment, but for the most part, this server.properties file that came with the download actually has most of our settings set. So for example, level name, level name, level type, level type, etc, etc. As this is pre-configured, we can skip over this. We'll need to make sure that flight is allowed, otherwise certain items won't work. For which you can see, Control F, searching for flight, it's already allowed. Difficulty 3, and the rest are all already pre-configured. Scrolling down to the next divider, you'll see you should pre-generate your world if you plan to run a server with more than 4 players. We'll get back here in just a moment, but to actually get our server up and running, scroll down to the next divider, for which you'll find Quick Windows Server Install. We've already done step 1, and we've extracted the server to a folder where we'd like to keep it. Then we'll need to download the Forge 2860 server installer, for which there's a link provided here. Simply copy this, and paste this into your browser. While I'd usually include these down below, it's likely this may change, so just make sure you get the updated link and information from this readme file that came with your download. Pasting this into our browser, it's already downloaded. All we need to do is double click it to run the installer, then choose install server and select our folder where we extracted our server files to. Just a quick note, if this doesn't work, Scrolling down, you'll find some info here. If it instead crashes, you likely don't have Java 8 installed, and to download it, you'll find a link here, and you'll find the same link down below. Also, if you double click the jar file and it opens in something like WinRAR, then in the description down below, you'll also find a link to JarFix, which is used to help fix this specific issue. With that out of the way, let's actually run the installer that we just downloaded, which is this jar file right here. So I'll double click, and now we have the installer. Choose Install Server, then click the three dots here, and I've simply navigated to my desktop, followed by RL Craft D, which is what I called this folder here. Yours may be in a slightly different location. Choose Open, then OK. Now our server will start downloading and Forge will be set up. Once it's done installing, you'll click OK, and the installer should close. Now you can delete this installer file here. Heading back to our installation folder, you can now see Minecraft Server and Forge. 
checking the readme, the next thing that we need to do is create the actual start file, for which there's a command provided here. Alternatively, if you wish, you can use the script generator at PaperMC to create a more high-powered, more optimized start bat file. Let's do exactly that. You'll find this link down below. Navigating here in our browser, we'll need to first of all change a few things here. Under platform, simply choose the drop down and select Windows here. Then for file name, select everything, backspace it out, and in your server folder, you should find forge something something dot jar. Select this and rename it. You can hit F2 to do so, otherwise right click and rename. Control A to select everything and Control C to copy. Once you've copied forge.jar's name, including all of those numbers, paste them in here and just make sure it ends with dot jar. If it doesn't, just add it. Then the flags you can leave as ACOS, which should be optimized for better performance. As it's suggested to use this generator, I'm pretty sure these options shouldn't interfere with how the server actually runs. Then if you'd like your server to restart on a crash, just make sure you have auto restart set to yes as such. Finally, the last thing we need to do is give our server a bit more RAM if possible. At the very top, there's a slider we can drag around to change the amount of RAM our server is allocated. Hit Control Shift and Escape to open up the Windows Task Manager. Then on the Performance tab, you'll find a bunch of different graphs, head to your Memory section, and here you'll see not only your total amount of RAM, but also how much is in use and how much is available. Now I've got a ton of RAM, meaning a lot of it is still available, but let's say that I have only 16 gigabytes of RAM and Windows, my browser and other things like that are using say eight. That leaves eight gigs of available RAM for which we can allocate most of it to our Minecraft server. If the computer you have the server installed on is only being used to host the server, you can give it most of your available RAM. If you're gonna be playing the game at the same time as hosting the server, you'll need quite a bit more RAM in your system as you'll need to give the server at least six or so gigabytes of RAM for it to work properly and efficiently. So say we had 16, eight was in use, eight's available, we'll give it most of what's left. So say seven of the eight we can give to our actual server. So we'll then drag the slider to around seven and we're happy with that. As I have a ton of RAM on my system, I'll give it a solid say 12 gigs and that's fine. Then what we can do is choose the download button over here to download this bit of text as a pre-made start.bat file. All we need to do is copy this file to our server directory as such, and now you can see start.bat here. If you want to create this manually, make sure you have file name extensions enabled. On Windows 11, choose the view button here. On Windows 10, view will be somewhere at the top on the ribbon bar. Expand this and make sure that under show, file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. Once you've done so, you'll see this is titled start.bat. To create this yourself manually, right click, choose new, and then choose text document. Select everything, including .text, and call it, say, run or start.bat as such. And once you change the name, assuming it doesn't exist already, you can then open the file with any text editor, such as Notepad, and enter your text to start the server as you see fit. If you don't want to use this generator, which we just used, the instructions over here came with a pre-made command you can copy and paste. Then it tells us to save the file and run it. So we'll close out of this and double click start.bat. This starts up our server. And assuming you see complaints such as this, again, just make sure you have Java 8 installed. As I'm on a fresh install of Windows, yep, I'll definitely need to click this install link down below. Make sure we have Windows 64 and download the JDK MSI, which is the installer. I can then click through it as usual. Now that it's fully installed, I should be able to run the start.bat file once more at this time. Yeah, things look a lot better. So the server will start, or at least sort of start, and then it should exit out saying we need to agree to the EULA. If you've got the auto restart enabled, it's just gonna start over and over again. When you see something like this, you can successfully close out of this as you should now have a EULA.txt file. Open this, and as with any Minecraft server, we'll need to change false to true to agree to the EULA, save the file, and now our server should be able to boot up for the first time. So we'll run start.bat once more, and this time our server should successfully start, but keep in mind, the readme does mention that the first time your server starts up, it does seem like it's gonna crash or hang. Just leave it going for a while as it's busy thinking about things. The first startup is probably gonna take quite a while compared to subsequent startups. 
So as you can see, it's pretty much paused here. It's busy thinking about things, so I need to wait for this to finish. Finally, at the very end of this text file, it does recommend that automatic restarts can be helpful, but it's not exactly required as more recent versions of RL Craft are much better about collecting leftover memory and preventing the need to restart so often, so you can keep that in mind. Beyond this, we've run through pretty much everything in this text file, except for pre-generating our server, which we'll run through in just a moment if you wish to do that. If not, you can skip forward in the video past that point. But before we do, let's actually connect to our server to make sure things are working properly. I'll open up my CurseForge and start the actual game itself, but keep in mind if you want to change how much RAM your client has available so it can run a bit smoother, click the three dots here, followed by Profile Options, and then uncheck Use System Memory Settings, where we can then choose the amount of RAM we'd like to give our game. So in my case, I'll be giving it, say, 12 gigs seems fine. I'll click Done here, Play, then sign into the Minecraft launcher if necessary, and play the actual game. There we go. If you get a pop-up for Optifine, just choose Next and wait for this to download. And there we have it. Our game has started up. To join your server, head to Multiplayer, followed by direct connect or add a server and your server address if running on the same computer should be localhost or 127.0.0.1. Click done and now you should see your server here. We can join the server and just like that, things are happening in the background. Bop, there we go, we're now on our server. If we type something in chat, you should see it reflected in the server. In order to give yourself admin, if you wish, in your server console, type op space your username. So as you can see, op space techno in my case, enter, and just like that, you now have admin in game. So you can game mode creative, for example, fly around and test things out, etc. Cool, let's check out what pre-generating chunks actually entails. First of all, start by exiting your server. Instead of closing it, to save and exit your server, type forward slash save hyphen all. Then type forward slash stop to gracefully bring your server to a close. Once it's done, hit control C if you have the set to automatically restart, Y to confirm, and there you go. To pre-generate chunks, we'll need to download this mod here. Copy this link, also found down below. Open it in your browser, and we need to verify that chunk pre-generator is version 2.5. 5.1. So from the chunk pre-generator page on CurseForge, we'll scroll down here, down to main file, recent file, and we'll simply choose view all. We'll then need to expand all game versions and scroll all the way down to 1.12.2. Once we select this, we should then see the correct downloads for this and we need to look for version 2.5.1. So 2.54321. This is the one that we need. We'll click the three dots next to it and choose download file. Once the file's downloaded, copy it and inside of your server folder here in the mods folder, simply paste it in here and there we go. We've now installed the chunk pre-generator. Head back and start up your server once more. We'll wait for it to fully start, then we can run some commands. The commands are in order pregen utils set priority pregenerator time per tick and this command over here to actually start generating our world if you wish to add a world border to prevent people generating additional chunks lagging the server as they do so you can use this command here and you can customize it as you see fit then once you've finished generating restart your game or server as we're pregenerating chunks on a server we'll need to restart that and remove the pregenerator mod we can also use this command down below to pause the pregen automatically when players are online, which is useful if you'd like to keep the server active with constant pre-generation without interrupting players, as this command is going to take quite a lot of time to actually run. Running this allows players to play and it pauses pre-generation while they're on. So our server seems to have started up completely. We can now copy and paste some of these commands. So we'll use this first one, set priority, then time per tick, and finally the size for which we'll be pre-generating chunks. There we go. Once this is done, it should start pre-generating chunks and you can see progression here. There's a lot of chunks that'll be created, so this is gonna take a lot of time. As you can see, the server is slowing down and struggling as it's generating chunks, as this is a hugely power inefficient process. That's why we pre-generate chunks, just to not lag out the server while people are actually playing. 
I'll be skipping over the world border and I will be using this last command here just so that players can still play on the server and it should pause chunk pre-generation. So if we join our server once more, when we log in, you should see there's nothing more about chunks being generated. So people can play as usual and that's that, fantastic. Now that we're actually on our server and our server is running properly, how do we actually get our friends to join the server? There's two things we need to do, play around with our Windows firewall and then second of all, port forward if we'd like people outside of our local network, i.e. over the internet to join our server. Starting off with our firewall. In the description down below, you'll find a link to my blog website where I've got some copy paste commands. Scrolling down to this section over here, these commands can be used to allow port 25565 through your Windows firewall to allow our server to actually allow people over the internet and over our local network to join. I'll click the copy button here and inside of a PowerShell window running as admin, so start PowerShell, right click run as admin, we'll be pasting these commands, paste anyway, and hitting enter a few times just to make sure that they all run properly. Once this is done, we've now allowed Minecraft through our Windows firewall. Just keep in mind, if you're using an antivirus with a firewall or something like that built in, you'll need to allow this port through there as well. Now that we've allowed our Minecraft server through our firewall, people on the same local network should be able to join. To find out the IP address people should connect to, hit start, type in CMD, and open up command prompt or PowerShell or terminal, and inside of here, type in ipconfig as such. Hit enter, then find the way that you're connected to the internet, in my case, it's ethernet, and you'll see your local IPv4 address here. If someone's sitting next to me connected to the same router, this is the IP address they'll use to join. In my case, 192.168.1.50. Fantastic. Now let's speak about people joining over the internet. For this, we'll need to handle port forwarding. This sounds pretty scary, but I'll break it down in really simple terms with an example. Essentially, you'll need to log into your router and tell it to forward all requests for port 25565 to the computer hosting your Minecraft server. If you have multiple routers, so you've got one in your room connected to another one that's then connected to the internet, you'll need to point the furthest router to the next closer router all the way until you eventually forward to your computer. That way, requests find their correct way to your computer. I've got a whole different video down below if you need help, multi-router port forwarding. But for now, port forwarding needs to be done on your router. In order to port forward, head across to your router, log in with your credentials, and then head across to the advanced tab, security port forwarding, or something along those lines. Once you're in the correct place, we can port forward our actual server. There should be two separate ports that you can enter, in my case, external and internal, and these should both be 25565. I'll copy this and paste it to the internal here. As this requires me to enter a range, I'll just enter the same number so only one port is forwarded. Then the protocol should be TCP or UDP. And if you have a combined option, then choose that. Otherwise, do it once for TCP, then once for UDP. Finally, it should ask for where to send these requests, such as a local IP. And as you can see, it's filled in quite a bit already. 192.168.1. All we need to do is refer back to our ipconfig command and use this address listed there. In my case, it's 192.168.150, so I'll enter 50 here, add new, and there we go, we've now successfully port forwarded. It really is that easy. Of course, yours will look a little bit different. This is just an example website I've made to show you pretty much how it's done. If you need help, check your router's manual, Google for a guide for your specific router, and of course, if you've done everything correctly, you may need to contact your ISP to allow you to port forward. Now that we've done all of that, we can Google what is our IP and we can give that to our friends so they can join our server. So as long as your server is running, your friends can connect to your IP address and just like that, they'll be playing in the server with you. That's pretty much it. Before we go again, when you're done playing in your console, run the command slash save hyphen all and again slash stop to close your server safely. But that's really about it. Again, thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. If you wouldn't like to leave your PC on 24 seven to host the server, I'd recommend you check them out. Again, link down below. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.